Hey everybody, it's Jasmine. So about a month ago, I received a package in the mail from the brand called Elysium. They sent over some of their brushes and lashes, but while I was unpacking everything, one brush stood out to me in particular, and it was this brush, this nipple-shaped brush. I'm going to talk in depth about it in this video, but I really wanted to just give you guys an insight on all their brushes as well, might as well, right? And then talk about some of their lashes because I really like some of their other brushes and I have kind of strong opinions on their lashes as well. So I kind of just want to give you guys a roundup of everything that they sent me and talk about the nipple brush. The famous nipple brush here. So let's go into the review. I'm going to demo all of the brushes for you as well as the lashes and just show you guys how I used it and how I got my flawless look. I also want to be honest that I am partnering up with Elysium to talk a little bit more about the nipple brush here. It is actually called their Passy brush, but I'm just going to refer to it as a nipple brush because that's more fun. <laughs> we love that. So when I started doing my foundation, I went in with this brush called the Jada brush, and this is going to be your kabuki-like brush. This one was so amazing to me because it was very dense. It wasn't like my Sigma brushes or the Fenty foundation brush. This was actually allowing my primer to spread across the face evenly and then when I went in with my foundation, it just applied it without any streaks. And my main issue and the reason why I never apply foundation with a brush is because one, it always streaks on me and two, I don't like the feeling of a wet bristle on my face. So I felt like this did take away some of the coverage from my liquid foundation, but I never felt like this brush was wet with product. And I feel like because of that, I was able to get an airbrush finish and I wasn't able to get a lot of that streakiness that I always get. So as far as primer and foundation went, it was amazing, but then once I went in with my concealer, I felt like the denseness of this brush was a little too hard for my under eye area. So then I was kind of going in that sweeping motion under my eyes, and then that's when I started to notice that it was starting to streak a little bit. But once I started to pat the brush on my face and kind of just smooth it out, that was fine. Like it completely did its job. So. I think as a person who just really does not use foundation brushes, I think that this is a really good one. It is expensive, it is $37, but you know what, I think I might be converted with just this one brush. I'm not going to be converted to the other brushes that I've tried in the past because they all streak up on me, but this one I think it is an exception and I think if you are looking for a really dense brush and that doesn't shed, it hasn't shed on me yet, then definitely look into this one. It's something that I feel like I know I'm gonna use and I'm gonna get my money's worth out of it. Next in my makeup routine was to do my powder, bronzer, blush, and highlight. I went ahead and used the Yori brush for this and this one's gonna retail you for $40. Now for $40, I am going to be very critical because I expect this to literally do it all, which is why I used it for powder, bronzer, blush, and highlight. So when I applied my powder, I was like, oh my gosh, it's very even, very seamless. I don't see the bristles picking up the foundation that I have on my face, which is nice. But when I applied my bronzer, it was just very, very patchy, which was very strange to me because so far the bronzer palette that I've been using hasn't really been patchy on me. So to see that it actually was starting to look patchy was kind of concerning. But when I did my blush and highlight, it looked fine, like my face looked fine. So it was just the bronzer issue. Now, do I think you absolutely need this? No, I think there are a lot of angled blending brushes like this on the market. There are so many from different brands that I don't really think that this is exceptionally unique. I do think that the foundation brush was definitely unique because I've never come across a foundation brush that was able to give me no streak. So that, even though that brush was $37, I would pay $37 for it because it works. But $40 for the Yori brush, I really don't think so. Um, and that's just the honest truth. $40, that's a lot of money. And for a brush that I feel like a lot of brands already have and that's already been done, it's not really worth it in my opinion. 
Next, I wanted to move on into my eye makeup. So they sent me four different eye brushes and the first one that I used was their blending brush called Nuri. This one's gonna retail you for $24. Their eye brushes in particular are very, very expensive. And I feel like if I'm comparing it to Sigma, which actually was one of my higher priced brushes, I think I like my Sigma brushes just a little bit better and I have my specific reasons for it. So you guys know I've been using Sigma brushes for years, so I have a fond love for it. Now I think when I was using the Nuri brush, I wanted something a little bit more of like a domed shaped as opposed to a cone shaped brush. So this blending brush actually comes up to a point which actually is a little hard when trying to disperse color because this brush for me works better when you're just really focusing color in the crease as opposed to just all over the eyelid as a transition shade. So it's harder to blend out in a sense but it is possible. So for $24 I feel like if you are really looking for that pinpoint brush and you're you're looking for something that's really good quality then definitely look into this but I don't think it's something that I would recommend and that I personally want in my collection because I'm more of a dispersed color type person as opposed to really pinpointed and to be honest I have so many blending brushes that this one wasn't that special. You guys know me, I love adding that pop of shimmer onto my eyelid, so I went in with the brush called Zuri, and this one's also going to retail you for $24. This is very reminiscent of one of my Shop Masse brushes from their Foam Mink collection that I lost on vacation. Um, so it's pretty much a flat paddle brush, but it's not as dense as a lot of packing brushes. So this is able to blend while pack at the same time. So while I do miss that brush, I feel like this is a great replacement because I don't have any other brushes like it. And Shop Miss A doesn't sell the Foam Mink collection individually. So this is a brush that I know I will use, but if you're not the type of person to dust some shimmer on your eyelid, maybe you're not gonna like this. But I do see this working for people who, like me, love that shimmer. But also, if you have long nails, this will honestly do the job really well. The brush hairs are a little long, so you can really get into that inner corner and you could just really blend it up. So I really like this style of brush. I feel like not a lot of brands have it and I do think it is a little bit more unique. I decided to finish off my lower lash line, so to do that, I use the Alva brush. Now this one's gonna retail you for $22, and this one is very reminiscent of my beloved Sigma E32 brush that I use on my lower lash line. I feel like this is a very comparable brush, but the only difference is that this is less stiff than the Sigma one. This one has a little bit more movement to it, even though it's the same shape, and it's almost the same size too. So this one has a little bit more movement, a little bit more wiggle room, still works just as great as my Sigma one, but it's good that this one isn't as um, pokey under the eyes, but you know, honestly, they work pretty much the same. So it's kind of like if you're already on the Elysium website and you just want to pick up an extra brush, then definitely put this one in your cart. But if you already have the Sigma E32, I don't know if you necessarily need this because it's essentially the same thing. It's only, it's a little bit softer. I've been really into highlighting my brow bone lately, so I went in with the Clio brush. This is very similar to a lot of pencil brushes on the market, very similar to the Sigma E30, very similar to the ones from Shop Masse, very similar to the ones from Juno & Co. This is just a very standard brush. This is gonna retail you for $20. For $20 for a pencil brush, I am automatically just gonna say it's not worth it because this type of brush you could find anywhere. Every brand has one, e.l.f. has one, and you know, I just feel like $20 is a lot of money. That's, for some people, two hours of work, and that's, I don't know. I can't really justify a pencil brush because it's not as unique, but it does work. It's very soft and it does the job. So that's great, it hasn't shed. None of these brushes have shed so far. So it's a good quality brush, but I am unsure if you necessarily need it if you have a lot of brushes already in your collection. 
Finally, I decided to utilize the nipple brush. Now this one on their website is a limited edition brush. This is gonna retail you for $30. This is called their Passy Brush. Now it's shaped like a nipple to represent Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is the month of October. So we are in this already and half of the proceeds $15 of this brush will get donated to breast cancer research, which is amazing. I love supporting brands that give back to the community and who want to help support organizations who want to find a cure for something that has just been going on for so long. So half of the proceeds gets donated to help women fighting for breast cancer and breast cancer research. On the website, this is marketed to be a inner corner highlight brush as well as a crevice of the nose blending brush. So I decided, why not do both? So I started with the concealer in the crevice of my nose because I didn't fully cover that area. So I went ahead, applied concealer, and I just went ahead and started to blend. But I just noticed that the more product I put in the crevice of my nose, the cakier it looked. And I think that's just in general for me. So I kind of just stepped that aside and I applied the nipple area with my shimmer shade and I applied it in my inner corner. I love the way it looked. And today I decided to actually put concealer under my brow, use the concealer as a primer because you guys know I do that. And I went ahead and I blended out that concealer and I think I like it a lot more just for the eye area in general. It is more of like a kabuki texture and I think that on the top here, it makes it really easy to get in that inner corner or to clean up the wing area whenever you do make a mistake. I didn't think I would like this brush to be quite honest, but the nipple came through. Honestly, it, it worked a lot better than I actually expected it to. So for that reason, I think I would recommend this brush. It is very unique to the brush world. And you're also helping cancer research. How about that? So I really enjoy the Passy brush and I also like the Jada brush. These two are my recommendations out of all of the brushes that I use. All the brushes were great, they all worked fine, but at the end of the day, I think these two were the standout products to me, both in shape and in the way it worked on my face. So I'm really excited about these. Now let's go into the lashes. The lashes come in packages like this, which is very slim, sleek, and honestly, really nice and portable. So all of these lashes has a small hint of color, which I think is perfect for the upcoming Halloween season. And just for anyone who loves playing with the pop of color, I think it is really, really unique. I have never seen lashes like this done before. I mean, okay, wait, I take that back. I have, but the ones at the drugstore are so cheap looking and they aren't in a style that I would realistically wear. So the style I'm wearing today is a style spicy and in the outer corner, there's like an orangey flare. And I just love the way this looks because when you're up close, then you could see it. But when you're far away, it still just looks like a natural lash. It just looks like something that Jasmine would wear, something that I would just run out the house with, but you just get that small little flare in the corner, which is stunning. I love it so much. Now, if you watched my Shigo and Draken makeup tutorial, you guys have already seen me use the style Wave, which is the blue and black lash for Dr. Draken. Those were amazing. I found that I really enjoyed the way that it just turns the look around and just I don't know, again, gives it that little pop of color. Um, but I did find one little packaging error because in one of these styles, I believe it was Bauhinia, the actual lash was bent. So whoever packaged this, they actually bent the lash and it is at the point where like you can't fix it. But other than that, there was no defects in my lashes, which is great. Um, I do think that this is a very thick band. So if you aren't really comfortable with wearing lashes, you will feel these on your eyelids. They do feel a little bit on the heavier side, but because I have been wearing lashes for years, it's not a big deal to me. I think the only big deal that I have is the inner corner area because the band is thick and I do have small eyes. And and that's just how it is. Other than that, I think it's great. If you do have like a smaller width eye than me, the ones with the color on the outer corner, I don't think will benefit you because you'll probably cut it all off. These lashes will cost you 13 to $16, but I think that for it being very unique and having that pop of color, 
I think it's worth it. I think it's definitely something very unique and I will get uses out of this for sure because I love the spiky style that is offered here. It's just flattering. You get that pop of color. It's fun. It's innovative. I've never seen a brand do it where it actually looks good. So the lashes are a huge hit for me. I think the one lash that I wouldn't recommend are the green ones, which unfortunately is the cheapest one. Um, this one is just in a very cheap style, to be quite honest. I have seen this style from Kara Lashes, from Ardell's. It is just not a style that I would personally wear. And for me, because my eyes are small, I would cut two sections off and that's where all of the color is. So for me, I just wouldn't recommend these if you do have small eyes. If you are a person who just doesn't cut their lashes and who likes that natural effect, then these ones will be probably better for you. But just as personal preference, this isn't something that I would go for. But other than that, I like everything else. All right, you guys, and that wraps up my review on the Elysium brushes and lashes. I wanna say a huge thank you to the Elysium team for partnering up with me in this video to talk a little bit more about the Passy brush. I am very thankful that this team is allowing me to speak my opinions, whether positive or negative, on their products because not a lot of brands allow me to do that. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you again to the Elysium team and to you guys for always tuning into my videos. I am just always so thankful and recently I have been getting a lot of comments, you know, asking me how am I doing and recently I've just been really good. I've been a, in a really good headspace. So thank you guys for just checking up on me and just being the sweetest hearts ever. Um, and that wraps up this video, you guys. I will have the link to the famous nipple brush, the one and only nipple brush in the description box below for you guys to check out and purchase in case you want to help support breast cancer research. So I hope you guys all enjoy this one and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scouts.